now this floor to uh, Luciana Duranti and Mohamed Abou. They are both from the University of British Columbia in Canada, and they are going to present their work on archives, I and, and trust. Please proceed, uh, Luciana. Thank you very much. Um, I am now showing my slides. So our research project is entitled I Trust AI. Um, it is, in fact, the fifth phase of the Interpares project. It is directed by myself and Mohamed Abdul Majid, and it is funded like all the previous projects since 1998 by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. Um, like the previous project, I Trust AI focuses on maintaining the trustworthiness of digital records over time and on the digital means of trustworthy access and preservation of records in all media and form. What is different among the various phases is the kind of technology that each phase examines for these purposes of authenticity over the long term and trustworthiness of records, especially public records. Um, I trust AI, as the name says, is, focuses on artificial intelligence systems. Um, we all know what they are. Um, artificial intelligence systems used um, in archives for processing uh, large quantities of information, calculating, learning, adapting, recognizing and classifying objects. Um, so the, the primary research question of the project is, can we develop artificial intelligence systems for carrying out in a competent and efficient way all the records and archive functions, while respecting at the same time the nature of the records and ensuring their continuing trustworthiness? Well, we all know what the issues are with artificial intelligence system. We know that the evidence is based on probabilities and therefore is inconclusive. We know that they're not always they're transparent, so the evidence is inscrutable. We know that the evidence is as good as the data provided and so may be misguided. The outcomes may be unfair to some group. The effects can challenge the autonomy and privacy of people and it is hard to assign responsibility. In addition, the decisions that this system make are based on past decisions. And we know that when it comes to human affairs, tomorrow rarely resembles today. And data numbers can't say what has a moral value. Um, in 2018, there was a Montreal declaration uh, that established that any use of AI must take care of well-being, autonomy and privacy of people, must respect solidarity, democratic participation, equity, diversity and inclusion, caution, responsibility and sustainable development. Now, there have been lots of projects that have been looking at AI and archives, and they typically look at a specific tool in a specific context and even a specific set of records. So this project have used recurrent neural networks for classification of content, recommendation systems to make all documents searchable, chatbots to find connected information and the combination of named entity recognition, entity relation tools and topic modeling to create visualization tools for types of data stored on these images. Now, what's the problem? The problem is that relying on existing off-the-shelf tools as all the past studies have done limits what challenges can be met. And it makes the needs of archives subservient to the larger field of machine learning. So it may be practical, but many tangible instances of biases have been found in modern machine learning models. So this raises the question of whether off-the-shelf tools are the best solution for the archival field and what AI could look like if this relationship between AI and archives were reversed with archival theory informing the creation of AI tools. So the goal is in fact this, to design, develop and leverage artificial intelligence tool to support ongoing availability and accessibility of trustworthy public records. 
The objectives are to identify specific AI technology that can address the records and archives challenges, determine the benefits and risk of using them or records and archives, ensure that archival concepts and principles inform the development of responsible AI, and validate outcomes from objective three. The studies, uh, we have at this moment about 44 studies going on. They are all inter international and interdisciplinary. They focus on all aspects of archival function from creation to reference and access, including appraisal, arrangement and description, retention and preservation, et cetera. However, some of them are across all the archival functions and they address common concerns um, like um, records as cultural heritage, government records, education, et cetera. So there are studies on privacy, personal and sensitive information, on ethical issues, on education, how to teach uh, AI to non-computer science people, um, cultural heritage, uh, records management and metadata, strategies for various administrations, etc. So the project will improve upon existing tools and create new tools that will address machine needs, uh, such as machine translation, image recognition and description, OCR, text summarization and classification, and textile transfer for language or civilization. This is a big issue, for example, with inventories in archives, uh, to remove from them the bias, uh, hate expression, sexism, etc. Um, what are the indirect outcomes? Well, we aim to create lots of new professionals. We are involving um, at this moment uh, about 50 research assistants, but there will be, this is only the first year. Um, and these will become professionals and will carry this knowledge with them. But also we uh, have hired as a research assistant students of other disciplines from computer science to law and they will understand the value of the archival perspective in their work. Also, there is lots of knowledge co-creation because this project aims to enrich research not only in archival science, but also in cybersecurity, information science, ethics, etc. And we are trying to sensitize AI developers, scholars, and other members of that community to the role of AI record keeping and archival preservation and to the role of archival concepts and principles in the design of AI and in its development. The participants are eight, 88 partner organizations in the public and private sectors uh, in five continents, universities, archives, businesses, corporations. Um, we have 110 co-applicants for this grant, uh, which is until uh, 2026, um, plus one year, uh, that's the way Shirk gives money, uh, a number of years plus one, uh, 110 uh, co-applicants and 78 collaborators, and of course, many graduate research assistant. Um, you can find us, uh, we have our own website, we have um, a Twitter account and a Facebook account. Mohamed. Thank you very much, Luciana. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, for having us here. I am Mohammed Abdul Majid, and I am from the University of British Columbia. I co direct I Trust AI with my colleague, uh, Luciana Duranti, as Luciana has mentioned already. Um, so I'm going to structure my talk around uh, the following, seem to have uh, the following uh, uh, bullet points. So, so I'll talk about the central question of our uh, project, and then I'll delve into deep learning and a number of areas such as natural language processing, computer vision and speech within the project. And then I'll mention quickly uh, an educational platform that we are uh, developing. Um, so, I seem to be having issues uh, 
driving my slides. Okay. Okay, our central question, as Luciana has already mentioned, is to develop AI systems for records and archives um, that competently and efficient, uh, in a competent and efficient way while maintaining the nature and trustworthiness of the records. So this is our goal. Um, and And so um, the first thing we, we try to do is to um, break down the archival functions into AI tasks that are clearly defined because that's how computers work. And our uh, method of doing this is to proceed from simple to complex. And we seek to develop AI methods, novel ones, not only using things of the shelf, but we also develop AI methods that are particular to uh, the work we are doing to tackle these tasks. And we focus on creating state-of-the-art models that are also explainable and interpretable because we think this is important. Uh, some of the practical things we think about are related to data. How do we identify, acquire, and develop data sets? And we have lots of questions when we think about data. Uh, first, we want to know if the data exists or not to develop a certain model that we need. And if it doesn't, then how can we actually develop it, label it, and so on? And there are lots of other questions that come into mind when we uh, work with data. Some of these questions are related to ethics, privacy, ownership, respect, of com uh, and community norms, and so on. Um, then there comes also, how do we declare success? How do we know that something that we have built is actually good enough? Uh, how does it uh, satisfy the community for which it was built? So we need to develop also evaluation metrics or measures of success. So that's also something that we care for. And so, you know, if you think about artificial intelligence, it's a very big area. And uh, machine learning is one area within that big uh, discipline of artificial intelligence. And there is a lot of focus uh, within I trust AI on deep learning, which is yet another area within the bigger area of machine learning, which is uh, within the discipline of artificial intelligence. Uh, so deep learning has been very successful. It's inspired by information processing in the human brain, as you can see on the top left-hand side. This is a human cortex. So the idea is that when humans recognize objects, this doesn't happen all of a sudden. It, you know, information goes through certain regions in the brain, and then our uh, brain works uh, such that different neurons, fi neurons fire in, in certain ways, and then we, we end up recognizing, uh, you know, for example, that this is a human face. And there are lots of different architectures that have been developed over the years. Uh, within the field of deep learning. So for example, on the right-hand side here, what we see is a recurrent neural network that can uh, process uh, sequential information. So, so for example, it can take uh, you know, some uh, tokens which are, can be language and then tells us you know, this word is an adjective, this word is a noun, this word is a verb and, and so on. On the bottom right-hand side, we can actually build the two of these networks. And we can, for example, do what is known as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. So uh, a model takes a, a sequence of uh, French and then translates it into a sequence of English words. So that's machine translation. On the bottom left-hand side, this is a convolutional neural network that has been traditionally very successful with uh, image uh, recognition, for example. These are not the only architectures. For example, there's or currently the transformer architecture is very successful and it's behind the state of the art in many systems that we use every day. So we know that deep learning has revolutionized uh, scientific discovery in many different fields. So in biology, astronomy, agriculture, chemistry, you name it. And now it's the time for us to think, okay, can we actually do something engaging and meaningful to the society uh, using deep learning as a vehicle uh, within the field of archives. Uh, so um, it comes to mind that there are lots of uh, things that have already happened. For example, in machine translation, deep learning has revolutionized how we translate from one language to another. There are currently language uh, models that actually translate between 100 plus languages, also in speech processing, also in image captioning. There has been a lot of progress. Um,
So we can have, we, we can take uh, this, for example, and do lots of things. We, so, so what you see here is, uh, you know, archival uh, uh, data or uh, certain types of records. Sometimes we want to de detect the emotion or sentiment in uh, the texts, or for, sometimes we want to uh, declassify some, uh, some, some records, but we want to actually identify if something is sensitive or not. So all of these uh, come together uh, within this area of text classification. So we can use text classification methods uh, to, to uh, carry out all of these uh, functions. And that's something we are uh, doing in some of the studies. We can also uh, do things related to uh, visual archives. So we can take these images, for example, and we can uh, develop models that generate natural language descriptions of uh, visual archives. I'm just giving you some very high level examples of things that uh, we do within many of the studies. There's also a lot of work on machine translation and it's very exciting to be able to actually translate some of the even uh, um, you know, low resource languages, languages within communities that are uh, not necessarily uh, uh, historically being able to uh, work with these technologies. So we have a lot of work on Africa, for example, South America. And, uh, and, and this is like uh, across various studies, something that we uh, are involving, uh, involved in. Um, so uh, you can think about the intersection of language and the image. So for example, here, what I'm showing you is that you can take uh, something from um, a museum, so uh, an image of some object, and then you can generate a natural language description of that. So this is museum image caption. And you know, I'm sure you have seen a lot of uh, um, you know things in the media about how deep learning is revolutionizing this area as well. Okay. Um, last thing that I just want to highlight very quickly is the educational platform we, we are uh, working on. So uh, there is a very major component of uh, uh, the, the the project that is focused on training. So as Lucien has already mentioned, uh, there are lots of you know more than fifty. Uh, research assistants, and lots of also the professionals who are involved in um, the project are being trained on different technologies. We have decided to uh, put together an educational platform. Uh, it's already up and running, but we are going to take it into the next stage over the next few months. Uh, and the link I have provided here, uh, and then you can find us online, as Shannon mentioned, on the website, on Twitter, or in Facebook. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Mohamed, and thank you again, Luciana. Uh,